Hello and welcome back to LD Carlson. I'm Travis Sessions, part of the LD Carlson education team. And today we're going to be showing you how to put together one of the brand new Italian made Marchesio variable capacity wine tanks. Thanks again for joining us today for the assembly of our brand new variable capacity wine tanks. Now whether you have the 50 liter which I'm showing here, which holds about 13 US gallons, or all the way up to the 300 liter, the basic assembly is going to be the same and it should only take a few minutes to complete. The first step is always the most painstaking and that's assembling your lid. The reason I say that is the bladder will be fit to the lid and it's a little tough to get on there. It will take you a few minutes. Uh, I put it on in advance mainly so you didn't see me struggle for a few minutes trying to wrap it around there. It is a little bit tight, but it needs to be a little bit tight to properly secure within the variable ca capacity tank. You'll notice if you've ever changed a bicycle tire, it's very similar. If this is just like the rim, you put your tube through for your air and the plastic goes right around in a little canal. It's really important to note I did not use any tools for this. You can do it by hand, it's just gonna take a minute. You really just gotta kind of finesse it around. Also, you don't wanna have any kinks in this and you don't wanna have any twists. So when you blow it up, it doesn't pop. Next, we have our airlock. Again, this does come with a rope with any of the tanks. Just makes it much easier to lower and lift off of uh, your wine. And I did tie this on in advance. But, so with that, we're just going to unscrew the bottom of the airlock. There is a seal that you'll notice. We're going to keep that on the top, so it's on the top of the, the lid itself. We're just going to put your airlock through the hole. And we'll screw it on to get a really nice tight seal. It's important to note, you really don't have to crank this on. Uh, hand tight will be good. As long as you're creating a seal so nothing can get in or out, you'll be fine with that. You just don't want to strip out the plastic threading. Next. We have our half inch ball valve faucet. I did put about six inches of Teflon tape on here just to help create a really nice seal. Um, but when you're going to screw this into the tank itself, with the way it's manufactured, you shouldn't really need any tools. You can use pliers to get it around if it's not perfectly vertical. Uh, but even as I screw this in, it gets snug right around the vertical part. So you really shouldn't have to crank it around. It should be manufactured to where it's almost perfect and ready to use right out of the gate. Next, we're going to take our air tube and one ring clamp. Put the ring clamp on your tube before you go to connect it to the stem. And we're just going to go ahead and massage the air tube onto the stem. You really want to try to get it as far onto it as you possibly can. Uh, it shouldn't take too terribly much work. And then we're going to take our ring clamp. I always try to make sure I have it vertical to where it's really easy to use the screwdriver. And we're just going to tighten it down. All right. Then we take the other end, same concept. Make sure you put your ring clamp on first. And we're going to attach it to your pump. Same thing. Go ahead and make sure you have it on there as far as it will go. At the very minimum with the pump, you want the full width of the ring clamp to be on there, but it shouldn't be too terribly difficult to really get it on. And we'll tighten that down as well. And there you have it. Now, your entire assembly is complete. With this, we're, I'll show you how to use the pump and how to actually seal everything. I'm going to loosen this about a turn and a half to be able to start putting air into this. You'll see with a few pumps that bladder is inflated. That's what's going to create the seal around the tank. So no matter how much volume you have, it's going to be able to sit right there and prevent headspace or any form of air getting in. Now, if you're using this for fermentation, I highly recommend you keep the lid quite a few inches up uh, just to make sure that any gases that are coming out don't come out forcefully through your airlock. You don't want wine to blow out. You don't want it to get stuck to where air and any bacteria is getting in. So if you are using it for fermentation, keep it a couple inches off the top of the actual wine itself. If you're using it for storage, go ahead and let it float right against the wine and it will be perfectly fine as is. We're just going to unscrew this bit until we hear the air blow out. You'll notice that it's deflated. so. We'll get it in the tank and we'll show its seal. 
Now I'm going to let this drop all the way to the bottom just because I don't actually have any fluid in here. Normally it would just rest right across there. I could let it go and then I can come back to my pump. But for today we're going to have it sitting all the way down. I screw it all the way in, unscrew it about a turn and a half, and I'm able to start getting air into that bladder. I unscrew it a little bit farther, blow up a little bit faster. Now, you'll notice a green section on here. This is your bar level of where you want to pump it to. I usually try to take it all the way up to the one, but anywhere from half to one will suffice. And then you just seal it up by cranking it down. And there you have it. It's sealed. The lid is firmly in the bottom. It's not going anywhere. No matter how much wine you have in here, it will stay just like that. And then it comes with a handy little hook. Just go ahead, loop it on there, and you're sealed and good to go. I do recommend you come back about every week or so to check on this. Inevitably, a little bit of pressure will be left out. Uh, so that will be represented on your gauge. Just give it a couple quick pumps again, fill it back up, and you'll be good to go for about another week. We'll get this out of here. Again, to get it out, you just simply unscrew, and the pressure will release. And you're able to just lift it back up. I do want to note that when you get a new tank, it does have this white liner in it. That's just a polymer to protect the inside of the tank. Go ahead and peel that off, clean and sanitize as you normally would. It is worth noting that this does not come with a stand. You can use a stand, it's not absolutely necessary. Some people will put it on blocks, some people will keep it on a table or on a shelf. The important part is to make sure it's not on the floor. You wanna make sure that it's able to maintain its temperature a little bit more naturally than that. So if you are interested in a stand, they do come separately. They are quite handy to have. They're very sturdy and they're built specifically for each tank. We do highly recommend them just for that very reason. They'll be able to withstand whatever weight you're putting in it for that specific tank. As I said, it is made for that tank. So they are available separately. And that's it for today's assembly of a variable capacity wine tank. Thanks again for joining us. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.